Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. We're just going to come back into the yard and we're going to start gathering up a little bit more timber. Now, I may or may not have left a little bit of a mess here yesterday, but I'm sure it'll be fine. We need to gather up all this timber and get it up to the mill and sell it. But before we do that, I want to do a couple of other things. One was I did actually want to grind out some stumps. So I was going to do that one first and just try it out. I need to move this one. I get the old electric tractor out of the way. Move that one up here. I'm, I'm going to park this one up here. Right in there. I'm going to tuck, tuck it into there like that. Because we're not going to be using this one for doing the fertilizer spreading anymore. Um, because of going up and down the hill, it's too steep for the hill to... like. To, for it to be able to cope with it very well. So we won't be doing that. Uh, we'll use one of the other tractors. Doesn't matter which one, just one of them. And we're going to hook on that bio belt right there. This should be the modified one. So we can go over here to our stumps. And if all is well, it will actually grind that one out. And we can soon test if it's actually all well. Because I can just turn the thing on like that. And... Oh. Oh. Maybe I haven't got the right one. Oh, yes, I do. Look. I do have the right one. It's clearing a big patch of grass back behind it. This, And it's clearing the stump in one move as well. So it's, it's definitely the number was actually the right one to change. Um, the, the big patch is simply the fact that I've got a bigger workbox on it. But, I mean, the, the workbox is behaving strangely. It doesn't seem to do anything to the stumps unless the machine itself is over the stumps. There's obviously something I missed with actually setting the workbox size. Uh, but that's not the important bit. The important bit is that. And if I do it like that, it should... Well, in theory, I thought it was going to remove the whole stump and take out everything. But it's apparently not doing that. It's leaving some bits behind. Or it was above the surface. That might just be because it was a really, really long stump. If it's below the surface, it should just have removed everything without any problems. So take that one out there like that. And then there's another one down here that I've seen. So, oh, there it is. It's up on that bit. I'll go and get that one there. And then there's a couple more back there. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to leave some of them behind. But why aren't you cutting? Oh, you have cut. Right. It's because it was on an angle. That's why. Let's just straighten that one out a little bit. Oops. I want to go back up here. And there's one there right behind me. And then there's another one to my right. And then we can start going that way. And sort of heading a little bit more up the hill. Quickly remove that. It doesn't take much to actually clear all the stump now. It's like Unless it's those the, the really long stumps, it seems to take it out. Oh. Okay, it hasn't taken that one out completely. Seems to take it out mostly. Might just have to alter it a little bit, maybe. There we go. I've, I've got it about halfway down now. Okay, well, we'll run it like that then. Is that tall one over there? There's another one that might take a minute or two to actually process. Uh, put that one. There we go. And we will be able to find out if we've gotten all the stumps because we'll be able to come back to it afterwards and check it out with our... Um, Oh, what do you call it? The 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 thing, the 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 thing, the um, not the, the yeah the, the like the, the place enable and uh, place en <laughs> place enable the um the landscaping landscaping is what I'm the, the word I'm looking for. Uh, we'll be able to check it all out with the landscaping, and the landscaping will soon tell us if we've got it all right or not. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Right, I've got two right here next to each other, and there's another one over there just on the right, which I will go and take out. Like that. Run down and grab that one, and then I can start backing up the hill. Like that. There. Is that everything? Yeah, there's all of them. Now we go back up here, and we got four of them clumped together really tight. I might just take out... Yeah, actually, I'm just going to... I'm going to work up to the stone, and then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do any more than that. There's a tall one there that I very much doubt we're going to get up on top of. Yeah, see, so you have to do it like that. And that actually took out the whole thing. I'm surprised at that. I didn't actually think it would. I'll get these two here. 
Like that. And despite the high speed, it still managed to take out that stump. Again, seems to be taking out... It, um, it's doing really well. It is taking them out quickly. So the numbers that I changed were to do with um, tree cut stump length or something. I, I can't remember exactly what they were called. And you know, whichever they were called, that they seemed to work. It, it took... It, taken a, quite a bit of trial and error to actually get it right though so i don't think that adjusting the size of the workbox in the actual editor has made any benefit i don't think that anything has come from that i think most of what i've got here that's beneficial is altering the numbers to do with the tree cut length something to do with tree it's not tree cut length it's a uh, or stump length or something like that i can't remember the exact name of it but those are the those numbers. I think those are the ones that done it. The um the grass, the fact that it's removing the grass as we drive around, uh, pretty much at any position. That is to do with the workbox and also the fact that it's removing the grass right behind us. Although it's not taking the stump out right behind us, uh, all the way behind us. It's only doing that still under the machine. So there's another box somewhere on the model that I didn't get. That that's another one there that I, I missed, and. Probably shouldn't have done. I should have paid more attention to what I was doing. But there is definitely there's something else on the model that would allow the stumps to also be removed. But, uh, yeah, well, I haven't done those, so that's fine. We'll, we'll come back and we'll do those another day. So I've done that bit. I've done some stump grinding. There's more stump grinding to do at the top of the hill, which I'm not going to do now. I will leave that for another time. Because right now I would like to get started on the baling. We're going to start down in this field down here. I'm going to bring you there like that, and I'll lower you down and undo you. Yeah, I know it's absolutely filthy, but I'm prepared to leave it just as it is. Turn round. So we get that front mower on. We won't be using the side-mounted mower. We'll leave that one. Bring you up to there, and do it like that. There we go. Change over. Drop you down there. We've got a nice collection of matching machinery here now. I, I like the fact that everything is starting to match up, all in red. That's what I'm going to aim for, is I'm, I'm going to aim for everything in red. I know that I said that I would go for New Holland and John Deere stuff as well as Case. And, I well, yeah, I also know that some of this is Coon machinery, and some of it is, you know, nothing to do with Coon or Case. But, um, yeah, I'd like to try and get everything in red. I think that would be quite cool. If we can do everything in red, I do think that would actually be quite a cool thing to have. And I'm going to take you over this way. So I'm going to unfold that one, and then I'm going to unfold the mower, and then I'm going to go back to the baler. And for this bit here, I am going to just do an edge bit. I'm going to go like that. Start the baler up, and then I'm going to move to the mower, and I'm going to... Start and lower that one. And then I'm just going to go into it like this. There we go. Right. That's gathering everything up there. We'll do it. It's 8,000 litre bales again, as we normally do. Take you out that far there. Like that. And it's leaving the mower down on the ground that's why it's doing it like that but i'm actually quite happy with that i'm, I'm preferring it like that uh, except that this time i'd like to lift it up so if i do that a minute i'll just gather up the grass that i've left on the floor there because otherwise it's just going to leave a horrible horrible mess i will back up a minute now what i do have is the jeep not the gps the other one is it on here let me go control. Yes, I've got the AI vehicle extension. I'm wondering about using that. I'll do it this way round. And we'll go round the field. So I'll go AI vehicle on. Like this. And then I will press H like that. Well, it doesn't like that. Let me try starting that one up. Nope. Right, it definitely doesn't like it. Not for doing it like this. It it's, it's it definitely doesn't like that. It's um 
I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. So we'll turn the AI vehicle off like that, and I'll lower that mower down and switch that one on. We will drive up the side of this one right here. I'm only going to do a single pass. I'm not going to do any more passes anywhere. I'm just going to let the mower carry on and do it itself. Um, I, why, why complicate things? I'm sure it's going to work absolutely fine. So there is no point whatsoever in complicating anything. Bring it over to here. Like this. And then I need to kind of get it at that angle there, I think. Something like that. Helper F is blocked by an object. Right. Is that working? It is work. Right, it, it is doing. Helper F is blocked by an object, but I've put it going again. He, he now seems to be all right. He should carry on and go and do it, I'm hoping. There's no reason that it won't. We've done one pass down there. I'm not going to, so like I said, I'm not going to do any more passes. I'm just going to leave it go now. Uh, we won't bother doing the bits along the edges. That can be dealt with some other time, maybe. We may not even bother doing anything to it at all. We may just leave it. So you're going to come up. Why are you stopping so far back from the edge? I mean, I'm assuming it's something to do with the trees that are right here. But that is a very long way back from the edge. What I am going to do is I'm going to slow time down to one time speed because we're cutting grass and we need to leave that so that it doesn't end up um, producing... Uh, it doesn't end up growing the grass in the middle of the day while we're halfway through doing our harvest. That's one thing that I find really off-putting and highly unrealistic and everything else. And a number of you did say the same. We'll just let it do one more turn. Get that lot, and then he can just carry on. He's, he's just going to keep going and doing what he's doing. There, I'm hoping. And we will go back over to our truck, and we'll carry on with that bit. So you're going to go to there. Really? That far back? Oh, it's the stone right there. It's, well, it's either the stone or it's turning inside the field. It's making sure that it keeps the turn inside the field edge. If it's keeping the turn inside the field edge, that would kind of explain it, except that it's not keeping the turn inside the field edge on its lower side. So again, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. Seems to be doing all right, though. Whatever its reasoning is. I said one more, but now I'm saying one more again because I want to find out what this thing is playing at. Is it going to do the same again or is it going to go up a little bit further along the field? I'm hoping it will go a little bit further along the field because we're leaving a huge tract of grass all the way behind here. Look at all that. There's loads of it down on that corner. Right, that's a little better up there. There we go. That's, that's much more like it. Okay, we, we, we can leave that one going now. He's going to carry on and do what he's doing. We're going to go back over to you, and we're going to start loading up. So we've got switch to the right-hand side like that. We've got two stacks on, and that means I can start auto-loading. So I need to go very slowly moving forwards. Because otherwise, the logs end up drifting back the trailer. Oh, wait a minute. I need to have it on... It's supposed to be on the left-hand side. And it's loading on the wrong position. So I need to, if I do that, switch pile one. There we go. Right. So, oops. I've, I've switched to pile one. So that'll do the front pile there. Like that. And then all I need to do, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch that one off before I move. And then I'm going to go up a bit. And then I'm going to switch it on. Because otherwise it's going to end up. It's, it's going to start doing weird things, I reckon, if, if I'm not careful. I don't want it to do anything weird. Right, we can grab those and load them in. It's done a nice, tidy job of that. I mean, we got one little bit there on the side that is possibly going to cause problems, but I think it'll be all right. There's another little bit up on the side, but again, I think he's probably going to be okay. And that'll load that right up to the very top like that. Except that it's not going to go any further, so I need to move in a bit. And then it will start moving it to the back. So I can start loading again. Oh, he's already switched to the back. It wasn't supposed to do that. 
He's supposed to stay loading them on the front line. I'll load a few more on the front in a minute. I'm actually going to do that now. I'm switching it to the front. I've just switched it then. So I go over here to the main stack and go loading. There we go. Why have you dropped all the way out like that? That was not part of the master plan. And it's dropped. Why? That one log there. That one's irritating me. That one's supposed to stay up on top. There we go. Right. Then I'm going to do that. And I'm going to load it on. I know I could probably... Oh. Oops. Right. Well, I, I, may, I may have... Oh, no. I haven't. I, I thought that I had one sort of hanging off the edges. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to get those loaded on. We'll just go with this one. That tractor has almost produced one bale now. There he is. He has produced one bale now. He's dumped it out on the ground. We're going to take this load up to the mill. We're on $72,000 at the moment. Oh, no, he's still not dumped it out onto the ground. He's, he's thinking about dumping it out on the ground. He's probably going to do it up there where it's inconvenient. We'll let him kick. He's quite capable of doing... No, 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 like, we might be able to come over and pick it up, but honestly, it's it's going to be a real struggle to pick that one back up again. And um, I'm not sure if I said there should be penalties. I'm, I'm thinking there should be some kind of penalty. If we tip the load over, it's definitely got to be some kind of penalty for that. But I don't know what it should be. It should be... Yeah, I, I can't just sort of not do anything if we tip the load right over. That That would be wrong. Uh, but quite what I would have as the penalty, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. Let's hope that it never comes to it. Let's let's hope that I never actually tip the load over and then I'm not going to have to deal with that question. That is one of those philosophical questions that sometimes are asked in life that I will never, ever, 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 ever have to deal with. At least not in this series. Let's go right there. $42,700 right there. And dump that lot down. I've got one log up on the top. That's not good. Uh, that makes 43 and a half. That makes 49 and a half. So when we shake this, we can shake it off right here. Go on, shake it off. Shake it off. Nope, it's just going to hover over the top. There we go. Right, we've shaken it off. And take that one out as well. Uh, oh, there we go. 823. So we're just a fraction over $50,000 for that load. Absolutely fantastic. We've now got $122,000, which means that we've not even got enough for our first, um, actually, excuse you. Uh, if we've got, if we go for the small grain silo, we've got enough for the small grain silo. If we don't go for the small grain silo and we say that we're going to go for a big grain silo, then we don't have enough. We've probably got enough to buy a combine. We could get that one. We could also bring that over here and deliver it and everything else. Um, because I did originally say I was going to go for this bison right here. It's 84,000. It's got a tank of 3,500 litres capacity. This one here is 100,000. Now, if we go into the headers in here... You got 27,000 on that one. That's 32. So I need 132,000 to be able to get the New Holland in total. This one here is 27,084. So it's 91, um, 111. So I've actually got enough money to buy the Bison Combine and go with that. Otherwise, we're sort of looking at an upgrade. And I'm thinking, you know, I know that one's 5,600 and this one's 3,500. That one there is 4,500. That one's actually less. It's a smaller tank. I don't know why that one's a bonus. Maybe it takes more stuff. I don't know. Uh, this one here, the, the Bison Super Z056. This, I think, should be our first combine. And this one here will cost us 111,000, which we could afford. Now, some people said that we should be seriously considering 
uh, some modded ones instead. So perhaps the case axial flow over here, but that's 145,000. We'd have to find a cheaper option somewhere. But there's the first bit. So we, we, we've got the combine. Next, we need a sprayer. Crop protection. Cheapest sprayer is that one for 30 grand. We can get an ex that's a 1300 litre tank. We can get an extension of another 1500 litres uh, for eight. So 38,000 gets us uh, 2800 litres. 35,000 gets a 24 metre spread instead of a 21. And it gets 2200 litres. So slightly less, but a slightly wider spread. So that'll be one of those two setups that we get for that. Um, we'll worry about that later. I'm not going to worry about that now. Now that tractor and baler is coming along nicely. We've got one bale so far. No, we've got two. Two bales so far. We're doing well on this. I'm not going to bother picking up the rest of that timber. I'm just going to leave it right where it is. And we will deal with that some other time. I think that we can just leave that lying in the yard right there. Actually. Now that I've just said that, I'm thinking maybe we should pick it up. And then it's not going to be lying around and untidy. So let's 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 do pick it up. It's going to go onto the the. Yeah, fine. It it, it can go onto the the back. Of the... No, actually, I don't want it to go onto the back of the truck at all. Right, stop that. Unload. Like that, and then change over to the front load position and load it again. Pick those up like that. Stop loading a minute. We will keep it at the front. But do it like this, we'll, we'll get them out of the way and we can get them up to the mill and then us, it, it's done, it's cleared and we haven't got any mess left in the yard either. That that would be a very good thing, not having all this mess left in the yard. There's, oh there it is, right. Trying to pick up that branch there, it doesn't seem to like it. Oh, there we go. It's decided to move it to the back for some strange reason. Now I come over here and there's another little short bit over this side that I need to grab. And I may as well run that up to the top as well. Oh, there's another bale down this end. I'm hoping... What on earth was that? Oh, it's... it's... As soon as you have something strange happen, it does seem to stop loading but I don't really know what that one was in aid of I'm gonna put you up here nope there right if I do that then I can dump it down there like that it's sort of clipping a little bit I'm hoping that's gonna be all right jump back into the truck straps on like that and we'll get you up to the mill so here comes the tractor and the baler let's switch over to it a minute Oh, no, there's loads of space on the side there. I was one, I was sort of a little bit worried that it was going to get right in the way of the mower and the baler and that. We've got a, a, a wide piece up this top end here. There, see, it's lifting up at about that point and then turning round. So we've got loads and loads on this bit. And now it goes and turns. Be able to get, it should get round that rock okay because it's quite vertical. It sort of reads that and then doesn't worry about it too much. And you go into there. Off you go again. So, yeah, we're going to be left with a slice of grass along the top, which is absolutely fine. There goes the bale. Should be back just far enough that it's not going to cause any problems. I'm hoping. It's, I mean, we've done this before. It's, it's been fine previously when we've done it. Let's take this up to the mill. $122,000. If we're going to be buying a grain silo personally i think that i'd like to go for the big grain silo i'm thinking that would be the better option um obviously get into the comments section and give me your views on which grain silo you think we should be going for but the big one is 200,000 liters and costs 180,000 dollars the small one has a capacity of 100,000 liters and costs 110,000 so for an additional 70 grand we get an additional 100,000 liters of storage and if we upgrade if we get the 100,000 one and then upgrade it later on and buy an additional 100,000 liters of storage room it costs 90 grand a time so it really is more beneficial you look in here it's, uh, silos right there so yeah 110 for 100,000, 180 for 200,000, silo extension, 90 grand, 100,000. So we have to pay 90 grand to bump it basically from that storage to that storage. 
or if we do it right at the beginning, it only costs 70. So it's actually, um, over time, yeah, we'd split it up, but that option right there is going to cost $20,000 more than that option, which is why I'm thinking that we should go for the big option. If we, if we just save up a little bit more and get the 180,000, I mean, yes, quite possibly we wouldn't really need it. We wouldn't actually be able to fully justify using all that much to start with, but at the same time, I still think it'd be a good idea. Now, we've just sold 5,393. I've still got a bit at the back there. Let's bring that in and try that one again then, shall we? I'm going to go around this way. Um, 5393... 11? That must have been one that, like, wasn't fully existent or something. I don't know. $11 for that whole piece of timber seems a little bit... I don't know. We, we, we seem to have been cheated a little bit there, I think. I'm sure there was something slightly wrong with that tree. I mean, if there was something slightly wrong with the tree, it does indeed prove that the, the the wrongness with the trees doesn't really affect the Ponzi Scorpion. It still allows it to all work. Now, let's have a look. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, it's gone all the way up there. Let's go and have a look at that. So you come all the way up here. The bale down the other end, it didn't seem to cause any problems. We've got quite a big dip in the grass right here. There, go on. Lower your mower down. Off your trot. All the way up across the field. So we've got nice long runs up through here now. And then we've still, we'll still have the other bit of the field to do over there. Didn't cause any problem with the bales. We will come back in with the wrapper at some point. I'm not quite sure when. We're going to go and do some more tree cutting next after we've sort of looked at this a little bit. Well, we, we may not get to tree cutting today. We, we, we might do that in our next episode. Um, but getting some of these bales wrapped is another thing that I suppose I could start doing. As long as the bales swing out that way, we'll be all right. Occasionally, they swing the other way, don't they? They swing into the grass, and that's the bit that has caused us problems previously. We've had issues with that. Um, although up here, it doesn't look like we're going to have any issues at all. This is literally just going to be a case of us um, grabbing the mower and baler, I think, and doing a few passes across this top end of the field after we're finished. That'll get us almost a complete bale. It's, I mean, it, it seems to be much the same around that rock. Going around the rock there, if we do that a few times, we, we can sort of sort that bit out. And you come up there. Yeah, going to miss the bale without any problem. Nice long runs down through here as well. That makes it nice and easy. Go to you. Let's get you back to the yard. Once you're back there, that's... Actually, well, that's everything that I want to do with this one for now. We've got tree stumps up at the top of the hill. And I'm not going to worry about those until much later on. So I whiz you in here. So do I go and buy the combine and start loading that one up and bringing it back? Or do I go and do a little bit of tree felling? I think I'm... I may as well just do a bit of tree felling for now. We won't worry about the combine. I know what I am going to do is I'm going to have a look at the price of silage this morning. Wool is 932, silage is 298, and at the moment that price is not moving. So it's either at it's either currently at the bottom of the price or it's currently at the top. It's either risen up to 298 or it's dropped down to 298. I'm hoping it's dropped down to 298, so when it next moves, it's going to go up again. If it does, that means that well, it may not, it's, it's not going to be straight away, but it does mean that eventually when we're able to sell the stuff, we're going to make a small killing, and I, I quite like that. So, we'll leave the mower, and where, where, where did I put the, oh, it's right up here, right up in the trees up here. Um, we'll leave the mower and the baler going for a bit, we, we, there's plenty more that we can, we, we can go back and we can see loads more on that one later on, don't worry about it now. Let me go over this side, and... Right. There. Let's cut down a few trees, at least. And if, if we can get, like, get a few trees done... Not necessarily every day, but at least a few trees done every week... Then we're making some progress on this next field, aren't we? Right, there we go. We've got that one there. I want to just lower you down a bit like that, and... There is a tree cut. And I've already taken some trees over the mill, so we're making a bit of progress like that anyway. Getting that done. That 
baler all the way down there. He's about to drop out another bale. I love that you can watch these things from such a long distance away. And I also really like the view from up here. This is, this is really good. I don't know when it's going to drop out that bale. 8,000 litres of bale. It does take quite a while to sort of work through and, and collect up one, doesn't it? Let's get that one in there. Ooh. That was very nicely done. I didn't actually think it was going to grab it. I thought it was going to leave that one go. Let's chop you off of there. And is there one behind me? No, there isn't. We don't want to fall in there. It's just, I, I'm going to add that to my to-do list, I think. Not falling into the gorge. If anybody watched the hardcore series when I first started doing this in uh, FS17, you'll know that we've already had some experience with doing something like that with a machine like this. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any plans to be doing that again. So, when we're sort of dealing with like, really heavy trees like that, we want to be a little bit careful. There we go. Right, I'm going to bring you over there like that. I'm going to lift you up a little bit, and we we'll haul the tree up over the bank and chop it down over this side. That way, we're not going to be diving into the water with our Scorpion King. Because, quite frankly, that is not going to do it much good. It's the sort of thing that... Not only is it not particularly good for the machine, it is generally frowned upon by anybody that never actually does anything to machines. And those little short ones, they're the ones that we can't pick up with our truck. So we have to cut them in half. Like, what? It's like, I don't know, coyotes or something yapping away in the hills up there. And um, it's a little bit disconcerting to say the least. Sometimes the timing of it. I, I, I cut up a branch like that and suddenly it screams in pain. I'm guessing they're not coyotes. You don't get that. that that's a, no, a dingoes. I was going to say dingo, but maybe it is a coyote. Um, uh, dingoes is Australian. Those are the ones that we don't have up here. So it could very well be a coyote that's up here. Uh, yapping away like that. But honestly, it sounded all the world like that tree just screamed in pain when I cut the thing up. And... Having the tree scream in pain at you is, is off-putting. It's very off-putting. It is. It's extremely off-putting. It's, it's not the sort of thing that I want. My the, you know, tree scre screaming in pain when I cut them up. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, 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 it makes you rethink the whole using the chainsaw thing. It really does. And it, I could do without that kind of guilt trip because I've cut up a lot of trees and if they're going to start screaming in pain every time, that's the sort of thing that could keep me awake at night. It, well, maybe. Okay, if, if they're actually screaming it, if, 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 if they were really in real life screaming in pain, then yes, it probably would keep me awake at night. But um, if it's only going to be in the game, I could probably cope with it. I could probably cope with it. I'm going to cut this one down, and I'm going to cut this one right in front of me that we can see here that's swaying from side to side and making me feel a little bit seasick. And then that is going to be it for today's episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And yes, I will let you see me cut down this final tree. There we go. I got it. Nailed it. First time. Look at that. And up you go. Right. We get rid of you. Chop that one up. The slow progression of the tree into toothpicks. That's what we're doing. We're just letting it run through its slow progression of tree into toothpicks. Right there. Because i got another little bit that we're going to have to cut now. That's another one of those little short bits. So I'll deal with that. There. There we go. Right, this is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.